last three hundred minutes. So, uh, I am a, a machine learning consultant and practitioner after a management experience in a, an IT company that I uh, had for a number of years. And uh, um, I had the opportunity of working on a, a computer vision project at the end of last year, actually. So I thought it would be interesting to present what I have been developing and the way I tried to solve a curious issue that uh, actually was creating a production system uh, I was in touch with the software house. They were working with a privately owned kennel company and they were asked uh, to provide a solution to identify dogs because they have a, a number of uh, uh, dogs uh, hosted in their structure, in their facilities. And uh, mm, sometimes uh, dog's owner uh, might find uh, uh, that his or her dog is not uh, at home as expected. So by sending a picture using an app, the server, the web server of the kennel would use this kind of solution to look for similar dogs in the archive. And then uh, if a similar dog is found, an email would be sent back to the potential dog owner that lost his dog. So this is the, the basic idea. For this, I prepared some, um, some material for my presentation. So we will go through a, a brief introduction. Then uh, it will be important to define the problem because uh, the machine learning problem that we will try to solve uh, is uh, of a particular kind, actually. Then we will see uh, what kind of strategy I picked up trying to solve the problem using a, a data set that is not a large data set like the ones usually available for identification tasks. Some logistics information. Uh, there is a shared folder on uh, Google Drive that uh, includes a zip file uh, for anyone who would like to download the code and uh, experiment uh, by him or herself. Uh, the requirements uh, are listed and uh, should anyone have issues, I am available also by email. I will provide my email address to support anyone who would like to do the testing uh, offline after the, uh, the webinar. So I think a good way to move on would be uh, not to start downloading the zip file immediately. You may, of course, if you want, but follow the presentation and maybe you would like to use a Google Colab environment to try a couple of notebooks that I will point out during the presentations. To try those notebooks, you, if you have a dog, or if you have uh, pictures of the uh, dogs that you like, you might upload a couple of pictures of the same dog. This is important. We will use one of those pictures as a test image to find the other image in the archive where we will put it. So there is uh, some indication here about how to name the two different pictures and the pictures must be in JPEG format. But we will do this online later, so you might just follow along without going on your own right now. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, the problem definition. This is, uh, this is an important aspect because uh, it means, let's state exactly what we would like to accomplish. We imagine have an archive of dog images and uh, the solution we're looking for should be able to identify 
in the archive the most similar images to a test image that from time to time we provide using the solution. If, of course, exactly the same image that we provide for search is available in the archive, we actually will not need a special solution to find that picture because it will be trivial to find it. So uh, during our experimentation, uh, this is the reason why um, I suggested to use different pictures of the same dog. But we will also see why this is really important. Now, thinking of uh, looking for a particular image of a dog in a, a, an archive of images, are we doing a machine learning classification task or is this a different task actually? Well, uh, let's try to understand how a normal classification task works using a neural network because neural networks are the machine learning algorithms that we will use for our solution. For a classification, usually we define in advance a number of classes that we would like to class use for classifying images. So the number of classes is predefined. And uh, uh, of course, if uh, we uh, want to work on those classes, we have to train the neural network specifically to classify images based on those particular classes. Now, in a, a, an identification problem, the task is uh, different because we don't have a necessarily a predefined number of classes, but most likely in time, we would like to add new classes Think of dogs. At the beginning, we might have uh, an archive with 100 dogs, but later, in one month, for instance, 10 new dogs uh, from the members uh, that are the kennels customers, 10 new dogs are added. So in that case, the initial number of classes, the 100 dogs, would become 110 with 10 more dogs because each dog would be really a class in this context because I am trying to pick an unknown image of one dog and classify that image as belonging to the class of that dog on which I have additional pictures. So one might argue that this task of identifying the pictures in an archive is most similar to a classification task, but there are differences as I pointed out. And uh, there are also issues because if we would like to create a solution to classify dogs by breed, for instance, there are very good data sets already available for this kind of task. So I would find not so difficult to create or use an existing data set, maybe reusing one that was already successfully used for this kind of classification, and that would facilitate the solution. But for dog identification, as we will see in much more detail, we unfortunately do not have good data sets because a data set of dogs to be used for identification would require several images of the same dog for each dog that I would like to use for training the neural networks. So the data sets are not easily found, probably not existing. Then 
also solutions, existing solutions, maybe open source or commercial. Well, there are not a lot of them. I could not find uh, actually any open source solution for dog identification when I started the project last year. And no commercial solution either. There were uh, last summer a couple of initiatives that were going to start. One in China, I remember. They were trying to um, start a project for identifying dogs using the nose of the dogs, like uh, fingerprints. So they would use the nose. And the, their goal was to uh, identify dogs in order to identify dog owners that walking across uh, the city would not collect uh, uh, the droppings of the dogs. So it was a, a Chinese project that uh, would start uh, uh, supported by a, a very strong startup in uh, image uh, recognition in China. So that is just an example of another solution. I am not on that track. I did not use the nose, we will see. But that is an example uh, of how uh, it's not easy to find existing solution. So no good dead sets, no reference solution yet in the open. What kind of solutions would like to use then? Ideally, a good starting point could be uh, using neural networks that uh, have already been used for classification tasks. That's because uh, a lot of uh, classical models of neural networks have already pre-trained parameters or weights from the ImageNet dataset. It is a very famous dataset. Uh, you will find the link in the presentation and in some of the notebooks too. And uh, in this dataset uh, that includes more than 16 million images in high resolution, uh, there are also uh, lots of dogs classified in breeds. So if we wake up uh, a network that uh, has weights already trained on ImageNet, probably that kind of uh, neural network already knows about uh, dogs uh, a lot. And in fact, if I had to do just a classification solution, I would follow that way picking up that kind of network, I could train the network to predict the dog images. We would have a test image. We can take a German Shepherd. I picked that because my dog is a German Shepherd, actually. We give it to the neural web network already trained. So we give an input image and we receive an output label, a number, from the network that tells us what kind of breed the dog is. So this dog, the network tells it's a German Shepherd and we are in the inference phase. So the network has been already trained. The network trained for classification is, uh, is usually uh, trained uh, using this kind of, uh, uh, of path. There is a, a data set that includes lots of images. Those images are uh, grouped in breeds. So we have a lot of breeds. A breed uh, is a, a group of images of different dogs of the same breed. Uh, I can give you an example. I give uh, to one of the subfolders that I will use to show you an example of uh, grouping uh, of uh, breeds. 
So I take the train source directory, you see, I would use a group of reads and for each reads, for instance, this kind of retriever, I would have a number of dogs. All of these images are images of different dogs. But all of these dogs belong to the same breed, a curly coated retriever in this case. So for this classification task, I would group all the images in breeds and then I would teach the network how to recognize the breed an input, an input image would belong to. So I would give as an input images and for each image I would give also as an input the correct label for the breed of that image. This way the network will learn how to recognize images when I give an image without the label and we would be in this case the trained network will be able to output the correct code or label for the breed. How does a neural network learn? When we give as input to the images and the labels, the neural network predicts when the network is not yet able to predict uh, correctly most breed labels, the neural network predicts something that might be wrong. So comparing the prediction to the right value, the right label, there is an error and the training cycle consists in an algorithm that minimizes the error in a cyclical way. So we give images in batches, groups of images at a time, several batches, and at each batch the neural web network calculates an error or that it does wrong and uh, implements an algorithm to improve the parameters in order to minimize the error. Sorry if I am explaining uh, with a little bit of detail this point, but it will be very important for the continuation of the presentation. So this is the way to train a network for classification. Now, if we think of identification instead of classification, there are some important uh, uh, differences. Usually for classification tasks, we um, have a relatively limited number of classes. It is not uncommon to have classifications of uh, tens, hundreds of classes. There are also systems able to classify tens of thousands of classes, but uh, are much less common. But as I mentioned before, Another important aspect of identification is that in time, from time to time, we would like to add new dogs, which would mean add new classes because each dog is a class when we want to do identification. We have a lot of images, hopefully, for the same dog. All, that images, all those images are a class for that dog. So if we add more dogs, we are adding more classes. And in a standard classification task, if we change the number of classes, we have to train the neural network again. And we would like to avoid this. For identification, we would like to be able to add classes and not train again the network. This is quite important. The other point is that, as I mentioned before, for classification, we have available good data sets 
for training a network. For identification, unfortunately, we do not have large data sets. So we have to invent an alternative way to implement the training of a neural network. There is a technique developed in image recognition and identification, which is called one-shot learning. And uh, one-shot learning means exactly what I mentioned when we uh, would like to be able to identify a dog, even if we don't have lots of images for that dog. One-shot learning to the maximum means that after uh, the neural network is trained, it will be able to identify a picture if uh, an archive of pictures contains just one image of that dog that we would like to identify, not only the archive, but also during training time, we used just one image of a dog to train the network. So this is one shot learning. I included here some links for anyone who would like to know more about what shot learning and the area where one shot learning has been very successfully exploited is face recognition and identification. There are even commercial systems that are able to recognize human faces with a very high accuracy level, above 99%, which is excellent, really. 99 is a very high accuracy for this kind of system. You might read the papers here to know more, but you will also see that the systems that have been created using one-shot learning used actually millions of images to train the networks. So one-shot learning using just one image of a dog for a training would not be feasible for the solution that I had in mind. For this reason, I had to think about something different. What a neural network has to do trying to identify a picture. Basically, the neural network would calculate a number that would be like a distance between the image of a dog that I want to recognize and the images that I want to check in the archive of dog images. So if I receive as a, an input in the final solution already trained an image, someone wants to identify the dog, the neural network would generate a, a set of numbers, a vector of numbers for the image that I give as an input. And then I already assume I used the same network to calculate the same numbers, the same vectors of features. Uh, they are also called embeddings uh, or um, vector representations. If I calculated all the representations for all the images in the archive, I can compare the representation or of each image in the archive with the representation for the test image. I would calculate a distance or a similarity degree. They are similar measures of how close two images are. And I would say, let's uh, say that we found uh, this image that is similar to the searched image because the distance is below a threshold. So I could decide that if the distance of an image that I found in my archive is less than assuming that the distance can go from zero to one, 
if the distance is zero or 0 0.2, I say the image that I found is very similar to the image that I gave as a test. If I did not find any image very close as a distance to the test image, I could say, okay, there are no images that uh, let me identify the dog that you are trying to identify. So we use usually a threshold. But the uh, general idea is using the neural network to calculate properties or uh, uh, vector representations of each image and uh, compare a test image with all the images in the archive and pick the images in the archive that are very close as a distance to the test image. This is the general idea. What kind of solutions have been used? in order to solve the identification problem. One successful way is called Siamese networks. The Siamese networks solution is implemented like a couple of neural network that receive each one a dog image and we would like to receive as an output a label a, a number, a code, it means, that will be, for instance, zero is the two images that I give as an input are uh, uh, no, if the two images are different, so those are different dogs, but if the two images that I use as an input are the same dog, I would like to receive a one as the output saying, yes, this is the same dog. So what I do the two neural networks have in common? Well, the two neural networks are exactly identical. They just share their weights, their weights parameters. So that when the Siamese networks are trained, the networks are presented with a couple of images at the same time and the right answer and the, the shared weights, the parameters of the networks are adjusted during training so that the network learns to provide the right answer about the similarity of the two input images. A simple distance calculation between two images might be, for instance, just the difference between the vector representations of the two images. This is a very successful way of solving the identification problem with one shot learning, actually. Let's see another example. And this is the way that I tried to implement for my solution. So instead of using the Siamese networks, two identical networks with shared parameters, I used just one network. And there is no comparison uh, for this network with a couple of images at the same time to predict if the input images are the same or not. I just would like that the network provides me as output with a, a vector representation of the image. So I give to the network an image and the, net, and the network produces another vector, a set of numbers that represents the image that I gave as an input. I would do, I would do this for all the images that I have in my archive and I would store all the vector representations in my archive. I would train the network to produce good 
vector representations for calculating the, the distance between images. And then at the inference time, I would provide a test image as an input. The network would produce the corresponding vector representation. And if I got good image representations for all the images, maybe I would be able to successfully find the distance between the test image and the archive images. And I would discover that some images are very close distance wise to the test dog image that I used. So this is the, this is the method that I tried to implement. It is key the distance or the similarity concept that I have to use in order to measure the difference or the distance between the test image and the images in the data set, in the archive, sorry. So what is the, the relationship between the distances? I will introduce uh, a terminology that will be useful for describing the solution. And there will be also some formula. Uh, the, import, the important part is to grasp the, con the concepts. Uh, the formulas are less relevant, but also the formulas are just math. Uh, there is nothing strictly related to uh, neural network or machine learning. So it's, it's just a little bit of math. Anyway, um, if there are any questions, uh, you might also use the chat and uh, I would check in the chat if there are uh, questions that maybe from time to time in order to uh, give time to uh, discuss uh, aspects that might be interesting for you at a certain point during the presentation. Now let's discuss a little bit the uh, relationship between distances. In order, in order to train a neural network to predict uh, good uh, vector representations for the images, we have to think that uh, when we pick a dog as a class, we uh, automatically say that that dog becomes an anchor, the reference dog for its class. So when we train the network, we will give the network additional images of dogs. And when we have an image of the same dog, we will have a positive sample. So the reference dog is the anchor. It's a dog that represents the class. The positive is a different image of the same dog. This is very important. And lastly, we will give the network for training also negative samples. A negative sample is another set of images of different dogs. So the anchor is the reference. Additional images of the same dog are positive samples. Additional images of different dogs are negative samples. What kind of formula we would like to satisfy in order to uh, train our neural network. If we indicate uh, with the D of AP the distance between the anchor A and the positive, and uh, we indicate with D of AN the distance between the anchor and the negative, 
we would like that when we measure the distance between the anchor and the positive, we get a lesser distance compared to the distance of the anchor and the negative. If the vector representation that the neural network produces satisfies this inequality, the network will be good for identification. So this is the key relation. For instance, we have an anchor, a dog that represents a class. If we pick a positive image and a negative image and calculate the distances, we would like, for instance, to discover that the positive distance is 0 0.2, while the negative distance is 0 0.8, is much higher. Usually distances are normalized between 0 and 1. For this reason, I used these kind of values. So this is the key formula. We would like to train a neural network to produce vector representations of images that satisfy this formula. Now we will introduce, we will introduce the triplet loss, which is an enhancement of the formula that we just saw. Basically, I go to the previous slide. If we just train the neural network to satisfy this formula, I gave these two numbers, but you might say, okay, but if the distance between the anchor, the reference image, and the negative is not 0 0.8, but is 0 0.2001, the inequality is still satisfied. So uh, we would train the network, but it would not be a very good training because the network could learn to give the same value, for instance, for this distance and for this distance. So we would have always this inequality satisfied even for very similar distances and we would absolutely like to avoid this. For this reason, we train the network on a modified inequality, which is this one. We would like that the distance between the anchor and the positive be much smaller than the distance between the anchor and the negative, which means adding something in the formula, a margin, and by adding this margin, I will satisfy this inequality and the network will be able to help me much more when discriminating negatives from positive images. If, for instance, we check uh, the, the numbers that I used before, assume that we still have a distance between the anchor and the positive 0, 2. In the previous page, we saw that if we don't have a margin in this formula, even 0, 2 or 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1 would satisfy this formula. With this modified formula, I cannot trick the network anymore. I, if my margin is 0, 5, I cannot have a distance for the negative sample that is producing a, a, a distance less than 0, 7 because if the distance is 0, 0.5, adding the margin, in this case, 
the minimum distance for the negative cannot be 0 0.20001, for instance, but must be at least the distance plus the margin, 0 0.7. So I'm forcing the network to learn to produce a re a vector representations that satisfy this inequality. So the difference will be much higher. The difference between the distance with the positive and the distance with the negative. So this is the difficult concept to grasp regarding the triplet loss. I included also the actual formula, but I'm not going in too much details because it would cost time during the presentation. I am available for discussion later if we have time or even offline by email. And uh, I put also a link here to a fantastic lecture by Andrew and G on Coursera about the triplet loss, which describes uh, in a fantastic way the triplet loss. So I really recommend everybody to check this lecture if possible. And if you would like to uh, see a, a very good example. In order for you to understand the issue with the images, let's go back to the directories that I showed before. This is the final uh, set of images that I produced. Let's go to the train directory. We have five breeds. And uh, you remember that uh, at the beginning, we had the five breeds. And for each breed, we had a lot of files. And each file was a different dog. This was the initial situation, but I used this set of uh, files to generate a target set of files, again for uh, training, validating and testing the neural network with a different structure. Look, if you go here, like here, I replicated the exam structure of breeds. But here, a breed includes a lot of files of different dogs. Here, the breed for each dog includes a, a class folder. Because if I want to identify a dog, each one of these dogs, each one of these dogs becomes for me a class and the class has a lot of images for each dog is the same dog for each class so in order to train the neural network uh, using the triplet loss that i just described i used the target set of uh, images with this kind of structure. And if we go inside the class, let's pick, for instance, this class. This is a unique dog in all these pictures. One BBFF. If we pick up this dog in the data set that I created, this is a class. So we have the original image but we have also 10 more images, I believe it's 10, of this dog. So I generated 10 more, 10 more images of this dog. This is the way I will be able to train a network with a triplet loss. Because for training a triplet loss, I need to provide positives and negatives. And the positives need to be different images of the same dog. Because the original data set, it is a famous data set from a Kegel's competition, 
the original data set is only one image for each dog, I artificially generated multiple images for each dog with a technique called augmentation. So for now, just think that for each dog, I have now a class and for each class, I artificially generated for the reference image, the anchor, 10 more positives. This is what I did in order to create the data set. For the purpose of the terminology, just thinking of the margin, I would like to introduce two terms. We have two kinds of positives, the easy positives and the hard positives, which gives easy triplets and hard triplets. I will define easy positives and easy triplets. All the positive images that are very, very different from the reference image, from the anchor. Which means that if I have a picture, if I have a picture of this dog and I pick a picture of a different dog, these two dogs are so different that the, the, the distance between the two images is very high. So I don't need the margin. If I sum the margin 0, 07, 0, 07 here, probably the, dis, the distance that I will obtain will be 0, 09. But and that is an easy triplet, an easy positive image. But I will also have, this is key, a key concept, hard positives giving hard triplets. Hard triplets are images that, that without the margin would be very close would have very close distances. So hard triplets are those that require the margin. Without margin, they would be very close distances. Including the margin, I can differentiate between a real positive and the negatives. So this is the way to prepare the data set for the network. If I have this anchor, this is a positive and this, a, let's say, a, a member of the same class. While here, if I pick, remember that this is the same breed. All these dogs are the same breed that is like a superclass. All these dogs are of the Kuvast's superclass and are classes. So if I want to pick uh, hard negatives, I would pick images from dogs of the same superclass. So I would pick this dog, which is a different dog from this, but is the same Kuvast superclass. So this is hardest for the network to, uh, to understand than picking this dog and a completely different dog. This is a couple of uh, uh, easy negatives. Sorry, I, I, I talked about uh, easy and hard positives I actually meant easy and hard negatives, I apologize. So I need to train the network showing lots of hard negatives. This is an easy negative because it's very easy to see the difference between these two dogs. While, as I mentioned before, 
Now this is the same dog, so this is a positive. I can pick a different dog of the same breed. This is a different color. Oh, this is not a good image. Let me pick up this one. This is another dog, it's not the same. Of the different, uh, it is another dog of the same superclass, a white hair for sector. This is a hard negative because the, the network should produce a different vector representation for the two images, knowing that the two images are neg a, a negative triplet. I don't know if this concept, um, if I'm be, I've been able to explain this concept in a good way, I hope so, but if there are doubts, this is the most important part, uh, I might discuss further, just let me know. Now I will continue in order to complete the theoretical part of the presentation. <coughs> The, the triplet loss uh, has been shown, has been found that the triplet loss uh, produces excellent results for the identification task. And uh, as I have shown, in order to use the triplets loss, we need triplets. Uh, that means we not only need uh, anchor, uh, we not only need anchor and negatives, but we need anchor positives and negatives, which means having lots of images for the same dog, which is different from the real one-shot learning that I mentioned before. Still, it is again under the, defini the definition of one-shot learning, but instead of just one image of a dog, for training, I'm using multiple images of the same dog for the training. So this is something very important. Again, don't miss this lecture regarding the triplet loss. Now, let's uh, go to uh, the, the practical solution that I put in place. First of all, we have to think that for Image, for uh, image identification of dogs, we do not have millions of images, which is quite different from face recognition, human face recognition. In human face recognition, there are commercial systems that have been trained using more than 100 million faces and very common open source databases, so it's not commercial, still include millions of faces. This is not the case for training my solution. So my solution is actually using small scale data set. If, even if it's a few thousand dogs, it's not small scale, doesn't mean 10 dogs, it still means a few thousand dogs. Also, initially, I did not have multiple images of the same dog. Not having multiple images of the same dog uh, was an issue, and I solved it by creating artificially new images of uh, a dog, of a certain dog. This is the way. And then also uh, for my solution, uh, I certainly did not reach an accuracy higher than 99%. From my measurements, uh, I've been able for an archive of uh, 1000 dogs to reach an accuracy of about 70% which is not very high. However, for the project that I was tackling, it was good, good enough, let's say. So it was a, an interesting project, success, successful, I would say, even if we are not aiming 
at an accuracy above 99%. What are the design choices that I had to make in order to implement the solution? First of all, pick up a neural network model. Neural network model is uh, a choice that today offers uh, really a lot of uh, models. I decided to pick up a pre-trained model from the Keras library, trained on the ImageNet library. As I mentioned before, ImageNet already includes lots of dogs. So if I use the network that has been pre-trained on ImageNet, the network already knows a lot about dogs and also about breeds. And then I want to train the network using the triplet loss, as I mentioned. I will need to be able to train the network, giving to the network hard negatives and soft or easy negatives. So it will not, it will not be enough to give random data batches to the network. You know that uh, for training a neural network, usually one provides in batches a shuffle data set, mixing all the uh, elements of the batches in a random way in order to improve the convergence of the network and reduce overfitting. And in order to speed up also uh, the, the network converging to a solution. Now, I cannot do this and successfully train a network with a triplet loss because if I shuffle randomly the elements that I feed to the network with batches, I have no guarantee that the network in each batch is seeing easy triplets and hard triplets. So I need to help the net to learn and I need to provide triplets to the network. Or I need to design a network able to extract triplets by itself. When I provide the triplets to the network for training, I usually prepare the triplets in my data set, in my batches, and then, and then send the batches to the network with the triplets already included. This is usually called offline mining. Triplet mining is when a network, a neural network, looks for triplets in, in a data set for training. Offline triplet mining is when the triplets are prepared before the network uses the data. When the data is used on the fly by the network to prepare the triplets, that is the online triplet mining. And there is a, an excellent read, is a page from Olivier Moindreau on Medium, with the links also to his GitHub repository, that explains how to manage online triplet mining, which is something that we will use. So these are our solution design choices. Then we will need to uh, create a data set as I, I, sh uh, show before, I have shown before uh, when uh, we checked uh, the images in the directories that I prepared, 
each dog represents a class. We need the different uh, images for each dog. And uh, we can have uh, hard negatives, which means images uh, of uh, the same dog or uh, uh, dogs of the same breed, superclass. And the easy triplets or easy negatives, when we pick images from dogs of different uh, superclasses or breeds, like I explained. And uh, we will use uh, this grouping to create triplets for the neural network to undergo the good training that we hope to do. In order to feed the network with the triplets, I used both offline triplet mining and online triplet mining. So this is something that I used also uh, to help the network to improve uh, the learning process and learn faster than uh, using only offline or using only online triplet mining. One example, uh, you will find the link also in uh, the first notebook that I provided, the one with file name beginning with capital A. An excellent example of data set uh, classified in breeds is from Kegel's uh, dog breed identification competition. Uh, these these uh, data set comes from ImageNet. And uh, actually it is based on work done by the Stanford University. So uh, it's a data set that has already been used for uh, um, working on the breed classification. And we will modify in this way that I show, that I have shown to you, in order to uh, be able to train the network for using the triplet loss. The theor theoretical part is uh, at a good point, I would say. So, uh, let's try to finish. This is a description of how I prepare the batches of data that I feed to the network. So this is the part of the offline triplet mining. I basically create batches in a way that guarantees if I have 100 dogs for training or 1000 dogs for training, I will give to the network one batch for each dog. So if I have, for instance, for my training, 1000 classes or dogs, I will give for one epoch 1000 batches. But a single batch is not a single triplet. A batch is made of a number of slices and each slice includes triplets. So let's start from the slice. Assume that uh, I want to create a slice for my batch, which includes, for instance, three positives, three hard negatives, and three uh, and two is negatives. In this way, we will have three plus three plus two, eight images in this slice. So I select the first class, the first dog, and the first dog is the anchor. And for that dog, I will have three positives, three negative, three hard negatives, and two is negatives. Eight images. So a single batch will have a slice for the class that I picked at the beginning, class, class one. And then depending of, on the number of slices that can fit 
basing on the batch size, there could be a lot of slices. If I have batch size of 1024 images and the one slice is eight images, three plus three plus two, well, I have 128 slices and in each slice we, I have this structure with a class with the hard negatives and easy negatives. I guarantee by looping across all the classes that I touch at least once all the classes, but each batch will include the if batch size is 124, each batch includes 124 images divided in slices, and each slice has eight images. The first slice is always the slice for the class of the batch number, class one, class two, class I have 1000 classes, class 1000, and the slice, it will be the first slice is for class one, the first slice in this batch is for class two, <coughs> excuse me, in the thousandths class, the first slice will be for class one thousandths, but all the remaining 1027 slices in each batch, I pick randomly generated classes, each one with its positives, hard negatives and uh, easy negatives. It will be easier when we see the notebook, but this is uh, uh, the, the uh, offline triplet mining that I implemented. It is based on a Python generator that generates batches in this way. Now, in order to have uh, lots of positives for each dog, I used a technique that is often used in machine learning for images. This technique is called augmentation. Augmentation means picking an image and creating artificially additional images, changing some features of the image. For instance, the image can be uh, cropped, so we cut from the initial image a portion I can rotate the image, I can change the resolution, I can change the colors, I can do a lot of things. For my goal, I could not change a lot the images with my augmentation for each dog. Otherwise, I would miss the meaning of the class for each dog. Is If I pick a dog image and I augment it, change the color and the distorting the image, applying distortion, the dog might not be recognizable anymore. That, that would prevent me from saying that uh, the dog belongs to the initial class. So I just use a slight augmentation. To show you, I go again to the folder where I picked, uh, for instance, let's pick this superclass, the Affen Fisher. For this superclass, I had uh, 407 dogs here. Out of these 407 dogs, for each one, I created a class. Let's pick up this one. This was the initial dog. And then using augmentation, I artificially create similar dogs, just flipping the image in this case, 
I changed the size. I again flipped the initial image. I cropped it, so I cut the image. I rotate slightly the image. It is a, a very simple kind of augmentation and the goal was avoid the strong distortion, preventing the network from really learning when an image belongs to a particular class. So using augmentation is or was for sure a huge compromise because unfortunately neural networks are also very good to discover if you are using a trick like augmentation after a while. So ideally the best case would be to have real different pictures of the same dog and using augmentation is a compromise. But I was able to obtain acceptable results. So this is the method that I propose for tackling this kind of problem in practice. I did augmentation before preparing the final data set to feed the network. So I used all these dogs, dog augmentation, all these directories, I use all the dogs in these train directories with all the class, super classes, which are the breeds. The classes, I, I picked up uh, the, an empty one here, the class and the super class, to create a binary version of the, of the data set. And the network is actually fed with this data set, which is a binary representation. These are not images anymore, is a format using the B calls library, which I um, describe in the notebooks. I provide also link. So I finally transformed all the pictures in a binary format for feeding the neural network using the B calls library. If for anybody curious about augmentation, there are several libraries, open source libraries for doing augmentations. The one I used uh, is called uh, Augmentations. It's a very good one and uh, I provide the link here. So, the last point, you already have noticed that uh, I used images that uh, are not, these are the full images in the original data set. This is the original data set full images. When I prepared my data set here, I did something that you already noticed for sure. If I pick any of these images, you see that this image is not a full image, but a it is a masked image. There is a dog with a contour of the dog and on the background we have black, a black background. I processed each of the picture that I used for preparing the data set in order to reduce the noise in the image. Reducing the noise means giving to the neural network more or less only the dog. So the neural network would not have to learn anything about uh, trees, people and other stuff. In this case, unfortunately, we have a dog that holds something in his mouth. Uh, the trick that I used is not able to filter out this. Anyway, it's much better, better. It's, it's my Google Assistant said something, but don't pay any attention. 
the method that I used for uh, filtering and masking the images just uh, provide bounding boxes and contours for objects. So I can mask the background of the image. But for instance, I cannot mask an object that a dog has in his mouth or a collar or anything like that. But all the images that I used, I masked them before creating the final data set. How did I do it? I used a famous neural network called Mask RCNN. You will find it on the on the um, link that I provide here. This network is excellent for detecting objects. So this is this is the network that I use to detect the dog in the image. And after I detect the dog, I use the contour that the mask RCNN uses in order to eliminate the background. I color in black the background and I just leave the dog in any image. So this is all, more or less. Just the last note, uh, for systems that, uh, that do human face recognition, during the training, usually, all the faces undergo a kind of a standardization because all the faces are not only, let's say, must but they are aligned so you will see that for training for face recognition usually uh, you will have all front looking faces for instance the faces are aligned and this is a very good kind of standardization while in my case i could not standardize anything because uh, dogs can be uh, in a very different poses and uh, the body of the dog also I could not filter it out because in my knowledge there is no system today able to detect a dog's head or a dog's face so I could not must just the face of the dogs, I could only mask the entire dog bodies, which means that in a picture also the body of the dog has influence on the neural network training. Of course, this is a reduction in the neural network's ability to identify a dog if we give to the neural network a test image of a dog with just the face, still it works most times and uh, this was the only way I was able to train the network for this purpose. So still satisfactory results but not ideal like in the case of face recognition. Okay. So I would now show in practice what happens. So let me close the folders that I opened. And I would now go to the shared folder. I'm not, I think uh, you should have access to a share folder where I place not only uh, my presentation and uh, the zip file with some instructions for anyone who would like to download and test locally everything, but there is also a folder that includes uh, let's say the main portion of the code required 
to run a couple of notebooks. Specifically, in this folder, I put a test deer folder that includes some couples of archives. One archive is a base set in my te terminology. So I have a, a general archive of docs here, base set. And uh, the matching test archive is test set, base set, test set. In the test set, I put images that are not included here in the base set so that it makes sense to pick an image from the test set and look for it in the base set, trying to identify the corresponding doc. Then I also added two more uh, archives, one for German shepherd, shepherds. So we have a, a base set of a few different German shepherds and the corresponding test set with a few images for the same German shepherd archive. So base set GS together which, uh, with test set GS. Lastly, I put a folder, find my doc, where you might upload images of your dog, a couple of images for each dog, image one and image two. This is image one, for instance, from a YouTube movie. And this is image two, which is it looks like the same image, but actually it is a different one because uh, in the movie on YouTube, the dog is running. So I, I uh, picked two different images during uh, the dog's run. Just to show you that if you would like to do a, to do a test online, you might upload two images of the same dog, naming the first one with <coughs> underscore one, the second one with underscore two, and then we can use a notebook. We can go to the code folder, and in the code folder, after uploading our images, we can run in a collab environment the prepare dog images notebook. The prepare dog images notebook basically will pick both images that I uploaded. Let's pick these two. This is the first, for instance. We pick this image and we process it using mask RCNN. Hopefully, the mask RCNN will find a dog, which I will mask then using the notebook, and will move that picture in the base set. So, picture. I think in the base set I have, okay, picture two. So the notebook, we move picture one in the test set. See, is the dog from the movie detected and masked. And then the other dog, this is the underscore one in the test. This is the image that I will ask to identify. And if I go to the find my dog base set, here 
are the images ending with underscore two, I find the previous image must, dog must, and uh, I uh, detected the master also here. So by running by running this notebook, basically, we will identify a, not, a, a dog in an image that we upload, and then we will submit our images to the Mascar CNN. The images will be must if a dog is found in them and moved to the base set and test set for the find my dog exercise. After that, we will launch another collab environment, which is the find my dog notebook. If we open this notebook with collab, what do we have to do? We simply, I'm waiting, okay, we simply go here. This is after the note in this cell, I put the name of the image that I uploaded. For instance, uh, I think uh, I have an image named my dog. My dog. I, I assume I upload, I uploaded right now, my dog one uh, underscore one dot jpg and my dog underscore two dot jpg. In this no notebook, after launching the prepare dog after launching this one, I launch I launch this one, change the name of the file to look for, and then I just run all the notebook. And then the notebook should be able to find the dog that I uploaded among the other dog pictures in the archive that I'm using. Actually, in this, in this exercise, this is uh, trivial because this archive that I showed you in test here, this archive contains two dogs, so it should be quite trivial. But if uh, a lot of us upload images, we will have much more images. So the task will become less trivial. Another way is also to try to use not the find my dog base and test set, <coughs> but uh, the base, the general base and test set, <coughs> which includes more images. And if you would like to use the general base and test set, you should run, instead of running find my dog, you could run predict. Predict should already used by default images from the larger archives that I uploaded for the exercise. Still, in order to speed up uh, the uploading and downloading operations, I did not upload anything regarding training the network. So you will not be able to train, not even to prepare the dataset because doing that on Colab takes ages because of the binary structure of the data set based on the decals libraries. So if you want to generate a data set using ABCD, and if you want to do the training using training, please, uh, it's much, much better doing it locally, offline, not on Colab. 
So said that I would now run my notebook and uh, uh, let me check if I still have the image for again uploading it at my directory project in the test here. Okay, I have it here. So assume you can do what I am doing from your own laptop on the shared folder using your own dog. If you happen to have a couple of images of different images of your dog. I am doing the exercise on my own to demo how to do it. To do the demonstrations, I go to the tester in uh, find my dog, I now remove these pictures. I remove also these. And let's say I remove my dog too. Oh, another dog is the same. It's the same. Okay. So I have actually a couple of dog, uh, a couple of dogs of the same dog here, but I would like to upload my dog now. So I go to the find my dog folder and I upload file. I go to ID, this there, find my dog. I think I deleted this one. So I upload it again. Oh, I already edited one, sorry. So I have to upload another dog. Okay, this is the underscore one, which will be used as a test image. And then I upload again, sorry. I don't want to do a new, I want to upload here. Sorry, I, this is completed. File, and this is the image underscore two, okay? So I have done everything in the folders. So now I go to the notebook. I go, to prepare the images for doing the identification. So I open this one in a collab. Okay. I can run all as it is. I will be asked for credentials now. Something is happening. Okay. So I click here. Okay. Okay, it's not important. I go to the to my notebook. For some reason, I cannot click the notebook. Perhaps I am on the bar. Okay, now I can. So I gave my credentials, so the notebook now can run. The required libraries are downloaded on the 
collab environment for the exercise and actually for the solution i used tensorflow version 1.14 and keras 2.2.4 i tested it also with tensorflow version 2 and it works however i have not updated the code and uh, for the exercise i used the code almost as it was so the imports are still ongoing here the imports one interesting thing while the imports go on this cell imports and installs mask rcnn from matterports repository so look here this is important this cnn is able to identify has been trained on the coco dataset which is a large scale image dataset and mask rcnn trained for the coco dataset a very popular one it's open source is able to detect this set of objects so if an image you have a bus a train a bear a, a, a spook you have a cow a horse mask rcnn will find it all you can check this on the repository page of mascar and then the link uh, is in the presentation but you can fi easily find it also by using google search <clears throat> of course for my work i uh, just used the doc identifier i think is uh, the 17th class in this list while i was talking installation went on then the image have been processed and uh, hopefully let me check so. okay let me check if everything is in place I don't know if anybody is doing the same exercise just to compare test here these are the images that i uploaded and here whoa let me recheck the notebook well this time if I rerun the notebook, it should go without any interruption. So I restart and run all. Because running by running this notebook, I should have seen the prepared images. Let me check. now it's much faster because i don't have to provide the access credentials and also the downloads and imports have already taken place Taking count process so for some reason it's not processing the image okay but JPG, JPG, which is strange. I'm not going to do the bugging online, just checking what happens because I don't see. Let me check. Another dog. Another dog. I don't know if anybody tried to run the notebook but i would have expected to find 
the processed images here in the find dog base set and the test set too. So let's delay this to the last part of the presentation. Uh, if anyone of you tried to do the same and was successfully uh, able to run the notebook, hopefully... Uh, I will try to do again. I, I, I did yesterday and it worked, but I will uh, try now myself. Okay. Uh, but uh, I will check it uh, later, so uh, uh, I will take the time in the meantime to show you, uh, hopefully I will not have additional surprises, the prediction notebook. So assuming that I have those images in the target folders, I can now run the find my dog notebook. I open it with Colab. I will close the previous one. Which was this one. And uh, okay. I open this. I will close this session of the other, the other session. So uh, the only thing I have to do in this notebook is to include the name of the image that I want to look for. So if I run this notebook, also in this case, it should work just by providing the credentials and it should look for the dog whose image name I am providing here. So I will run all again, credentials, step. Okay, so I would expect that this Find My Dog Notebook will pick the name of the image that I would like to search. I gave the image that is already there because I don't know why I was not able to upload or better, I was able to upload but not able to pro successfully process the images that I uploaded. So, notebook should pick up this image and do these steps that I will comment. First of all, we'll calculate uh, when the notebook arrives at this point, it already calculated the vector representations for all the images that are in the archive, base set vex. These are all the images in the archive. Calculated by the network here with the predict generator function and normalized here. There is a normalization. Actually, for the distance that I use, I have a range between minus one and plus one because I use the cosine similarity as a distance measure. Cosine similarity means two similar images will have a similarity equal to one. Two opposite image will have a similarity equal to minus one, negative one. And images that are not very similar will have intermediate values between negative one and one. So 
I already calculated the vector representations here for all the image in the archive. I specify the image I would like to identify. And here I obtain the vector representation for the image that I want to identify. Then I calculate the cosine similarity between all the image vector representations of the archive and my test image. And the result, the result is a set of indexes in this array. These indexes are sorted, sorted so that the first index is the one of the image in the archive with the highest similarity. And the following indexes are just in similarity decreasing order, assorted by similarity in decreasing order. After finding the index, I use the index that I found in order to display the corresponding image in the archive. And the, the, at the bottom, I just display the image. You will find that I gave as input a test image uh, underscore one, and I received as a result an image uh, underscore two, which is very similar, but not exactly identical, unless I made uh, some mistake and uploaded the same image twice. But uh, any case, anyway, you should be able to try not only locally when you will try if you wish to, but also in the collab environment here using the share folder. I'm, I don't know if anybody uh, tried to uh, use the collab environment uh, to reproduce what I tried to do. Uh, yeah, it's not working. I don't know why, but it's, it's not uh, working. I, I, will, I uh, will try to fix it at the end, but first I would like to show the training notebook without running it, just to show how it works. And then I would reserve the last uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, if there are no particular questions, trying to fix uh, the, the, the issue. So, uh, going to the Google Drive again in the code folder, I will open, okay, I can close in the meantime uh, this notebook. So, uh, probably, probably I overlap uh, somehow with the top bar of the Zoom uh, video conferencing, so I cannot click uh, as I as I want on top of the screen. I now open the train notebook in a Google, Google Colab environment, but I will not run it fully. Uh, I would just like to show what the triplet generator does. So, in order to show you, let me check an example. Okay, I have to run it at the beginning. So, let me run. I will be asked the uh, credentials again. Okay. Every time I have to log in. Okay.
and then I will go here, here. Oh, I will stop here. Okay, I, in this notebook, there is a, uh, after uh, importing and defining the paths, there is a section where uh, I prepare the triplet batch generator. If you remember, I had a slide here where I have shown how a batch, a single batch is made of slices and this slice includes a number of positives, a number of hard negatives and the number of easy negatives that we can define. In fact, cannot reshape means I don't have here the right version of TensorFlow, but let me check. Has been installed or not? Okay, let me restart. I restart. Let me check if it works. No. This here it's uh, the TensorFlow version because I I have defined all the directories, but because you. Are, uh, I, because I am sharing the screen, let me go to my collab because I tried this before. So I go to my folder with the same uh, notebooks where I tested it on, on collab myself. I open the train. Probably I have to close this because I cannot have more than two uh, sessions open at the same time on Colab. Let me check the sessions that I have open. Okay, let me terminate this one and terminate this one. Close. Okay. So, uh, this is not uh, on the shared folder, it's just on my Google Drive folder, but uh, I think you can follow me just the same. So let me check. Okay. My goal was to go to the cell where I prepare, prepare the generator, the triplet generator, and show you the images that I obtain at each batch. This is probably easier to grasp than this slide that I used. So let me check. Uh, still downloading and installing. Are still in the system. You see that here. I create the batches using the triplets generator, to which I give the data set that I prepared the way I have shown before. Now, the triplet generator is used during training here. Train which BC batches, train BC batches is the triplet generator, is be used at runtime, and it's used providing a batch of images each time that exactly corresponds to this, this structure. So a set of batches, each batch is a set of slices. Each slice contains 
positives and the, the two kind of negatives. Okay, let me see if this works. I am very sorry for this part not working. I tested it just before doing the demo, so I will check it later. It's a pity because uh, it would then be very helpful to see. I can do it on my local laptop. Oops. If I open the train notebook, this is the thing notebook that I was trying to launch. Let me see if uh, I don't remember the directory. If wow, it looks like ah, sorry. I now I, rem I remember. I was trying to do something not feasible. Uh, you see, in uh, the on the Google Drive, on the Google Drive in the shared folder, but also in my folder, in WorkDir, I don't have the train directory, model and output. And this notebook works on the train directory. It is the same in the train, in the shared folder. If I go here. I go here, here, in the world here, I only have the model, but in order to successfully run this, I need also the train folder. I can copy a predefined train from another project. Let me check if I have a train here, no. Okay. This is what I need. Copy. You see, here I have the train because uh, I was trying to use the notebook for training. But uh, as I said at the beginning of the presentations, I myself forgot it. It's not advisable to run training uh, here. So I did not even loaded the directory folders because it will take uh, ages to load even a simplified data set. But now, hopefully, I have a data set. You see, now uh, the directory is WordDir input train has been found. It's in a uh, we have on the shared drive only model, but we have here also the input train with the binary data sets and the files, the helper files that I use to provide the triplets. And this is what I wanted to show. You see, I defined here that in each slice, I will have three positives three hard negatives and two easy negatives. I have a batch size of 64. So we will see here this structure in the notebook. So first of all, I have 224 batches because in my subset of the complete data set, I just have 224 classes. So I have 20, I will have in one epoch 224 batches. One, two, uh, 224. For each batch, I will have 64 elements. So the batch size is 64, 64 elements, and they are split 
in slices. Each element is eight images, corresponds to eight images. Each element is three positives, three negatives, three hard negatives, and two easy negatives. So in one batch size of 64, we will have eight slices, eight times eight, 64. Eight slices, each one with this content. And here I display a slice. The slice has the base set, uh, sorry, the base class. This is the anchor. And uh, we have uh, three positives, you see. This is the first class. The first eight images are the first, the first class. We have three images that are three positives. Then we have three are the negatives. One, two, and three. And then we should have two hard negatives from a very different breed, which is this one. Which means that this is the same dog. The, the first three pictures are the same dog, the positives. The hard negatives are three pictures from a different dog from the same breed. The two easy negatives for the easy triplets are from a different dog, from different dogs, from different breeds. Let's take the, the second, we know that in the first batch of 64, we have eight, eight slices like this one. So let's see the second slice. This is the second slice. One, two, three, same dog. One, two, three, different dog from the same breed. And then the seventh and eighth picture are from the different from different dogs of different breed. So this is to show you that train batches I create here using the triplet generator for doing offline triplets mining train batches is this one. If you print a batch of images from train batches you have this structure and this is the train batches here I instantiate to the network model. This is the train batches that the network uses for training. So this was an important part that I wanted to show you. And the last one is a piece of code. So hold yourself. <laughs> it's a TensorFlow code and is basically in the uh, triplet online, online triplet loss.py file and here this is not my work this is from Oliver on one draw I put uh, the license which is an MIT license and the license in, in here this is the tensorflow calculation of the triplet loss it's not an immediate uh, calculation and I will not go through the details of the code. Anyone interested can, of course, check the code, but even better could start with the link. And uh, with the link, You will have uh, an article that will show you everything uh, about uh, uh, triplet mining. Uh, the only thing that I would like to point out is that uh, um, the triplet mining is implemented in two ways. 
uh, we look only at the definitions. The batch hole strategy is the first strategy for online triplet mining. It means that the network the network during the training here during this phase the network gets a batch of train batches which might be up to 124 images in the same batch and in the online triplet mining the tensorflow code provided by Monroe online calculates using the neural network graph the triplet loss as an average of all the hard triplets. So in the batch all strategy the triplet loss will be calculated by removing all the easy triplets and taking the average of only the hard triplets. Mandro then offers another strategy that he calls batch hard strategy. In this case, on each batch, let's imagine a batch of 124 images. On each batch, the network, the TensorFlow code, will pick the 124 image vector representations and will use only the most similar hard positive and the most similar hard negative. So instead of taking the average, the batch hard strategy will take only one value in the batch of triplets, the one for the hardest positive and the one for the hardest negative. So there are two different strategies that can be used with the online triplet mining. For my project, I actually used the batch hard one. And back to the notebook for the training. In this training phase, the feed generator will use my generator for offline training, offline triplets training, but I will show you that the network that we use, the network is loaded the net, I, I should open the Python file, <coughs> the network that I use is this one, is an Inception V3, it's a, a classical model from the Keras library. The layers of the pre-trained model, because I use the pre-trained uh, parameters, are frozen, are not trainable. And the important part is that I use also as a Keras loss. So the one calculated by the TensorFlow code, I use the Keras batch hard triplet loss that I just show you. So basically in the fit generator, I use both the offline triplets mining here and also the online triplet mining at the same time. So the network not only receives good triplets using the generator, but it also finds by itself good triplets using the function that I shamefully, shamelessly took 
from uh, Moindro work. So this is uh, the main point that I wanted to discuss, briefly discuss, touch during the presentation. And uh, I would say I'm done now. I don't know if there are any questions or curiosities about uh, uh, what you have seen. I hope it's not been very tedious <laughs> and uh, I apologize for the inconvenience during the online demonstration, but I am sure that uh, uh, by trying by yourself, uh, you will be able to do it. Please get in touch if you would like to. Uh, anyway, uh, after our demonstration, after our, my presentation, I will double check again on the shared folder what went wrong. If there are any questions, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm looking at the chat. So there are no many questions, so I can uh, read the question and reply. Is a gray background more neutral than a black background? In this case, the dog is black. In principle, uh, yes, it could be more neutral. Uh, I, I say this uh, basing on experience also on uh, image segmentation, not just uh, image classification or recognition. But uh, of course, uh, nobody uh, prevents us from uh, imagining that uh, we might have uh, several dogs in our data set that maybe are gray. Uh, which means that having a gray background could work well for most dogs, but maybe less good for those that have uh, a, a gray color. Uh, ideally, uh, one should have, uh, should try to strike a balance between picking up the best background and uh, covering uh, the highest number of dog variety uh, with the noise uh, sufficiently uh, reduced by the background color chosen. How do you protect the neural network from fake dog images? Okay, uh, the answer is uh, uh, twofold. If you submit to the network a, a, a fake dog, so an image with a dog that is a fake dog, I think there is no protection because Musk RCNN will find the fake dog and uh, it will be processed exactly like all the other dogs. However, if the idea is how do you protect uh, from uh, hackers that would post uh, uh, ma material uh, that uh, uh, would require uh, filtering in that case, uh, there is uh, protection because in my solution, but uh, also the software that I provide uh, that filters the images, leaves only the dog in the image. So if there is no dog in the image, the image is discarded, first point. Second point, uh, if there is a dog that uh, is uh, a 
a fake dog, but that looks like a real dog, there is no defense. The NASCAR CNN will pick that dog as a real one. I don't know if I have uh, answered the question. I hope so. Uh, Francesco, what do you, I read the question, images with two dogs. Ah, what happens if an image includes more than one dog? Okay, a mask RCNN will find, hopefully, all the dogs that are included in one, in the same image. But the function that I used in the software, the one that you have, will pick only the first one. So mask RCNN will return an array with information about all the found dogs in the image. But uh, I will only use the first one in the array. I don't see additional questions. Marco, what do you think if you are online? Yeah, uh, I think it's good. If anyone wants to see something or ask some questions. Yes, if anybody has any questions. Here, there is my email. So please do not hesitate to get in touch in case of any question or of particular interest. One thing that I did not, one thing that I did not mention, this technique is relatively simple actually. So you could easily use that for cats, for any kind of object that you can detect in your images, even pieces of furniture because I know about one case where someone used this kind of techniques to identify, to detect similar furniture styles. So imagine transferring this from identifying dogs to identifying cats or bags, blue jeans or any other thing that you would like to. You just need to work on the data sets. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much.